The Rocket Queen is back. If you're ready to pop off like never before, I've got a guide covering everything you need to know to playing the new and improved Pharah. My name is Nate and welcome to Blizzard Guides. Alright, so I've got a lot of explaining to do before we get into the tips. Firstly, the last two people who won the giveaway on the live stream that I did for the Halloween event have yet to reply, so Brewer Brian and Wagner, make sure to join the Discord and message me so you can get your gift. You've got until the 14th at 11.59pm Central to claim it. If you join the Discord and one of them doesn't respond, you, you have a chance to win a loot box. Secondly, I've played about 30 games on the new Pharah on a Smurf and I went 26 and 4, and I climbed about 600 SR and went from being mid-diamond to high masters on my account, so she's certainly the real deal. If you'd ask me, she's 100% buff, however, her typical playstyle has received a nerf. So if you keep playing like you used to, you're not going to do good, and you're going to perform worse. She's definitely a much more skillful hero now, so I'm excited to see how well she does in this meta. I'm going to go into the changes, explain a few important techniques that you need to know, and then go into the mentality and positioning, and then finish up with some miscellaneous tips. So with that out of the way, let's get into this video. At number 5, I'm going to go over the changes. First and foremost, the rockets have been revamped. So, the rocket still does a 120 damage on a direct hit, but those numbers have been adjusted a bit. 15 damage points have moved from the explosion to the impact, so the rocket does 65 points of maximum splash damage and 55 points on a direct hit. The rockets also don't knock back enemies as much anymore as the enemy knockback has been reduced by 20%, but the self knockback has been increased by 25%. Now, I don't think the majority of you realize it, but a 25% knockback change is huge. Like, really exciting. Most of you might not have known, but I played a lot of Fair in Season 4 and 5, so I'm super hyped to hear about these changes. I'll explain why the self knockback change is awesome in a sec, but first let me finish going through the other changes. The rockets also fire way faster now, so the time between shots is now 0.75 seconds instead of 0.9 seconds. They actually don't travel faster, but you can shoot all of the rockets much faster. Finally, the best change in my opinion, the concussive blast cooldown has gone from 12 seconds to 9 seconds. Lots of exciting stuff that is all very heavily underrated. At number 4, let me get you introduced to a few Pharah mechanics. I'm going to teach you all of these so that you can understand the power that you have as Pharah, so that when I go into the mentality of the new Pharah, you can see yourself using these texts to complete your tasks. First, there's the one that everybody knows, the Concussive Blast plus Booster or vice versa. All you have to do is use your Concussive Blast to knock you horizontally and then your Booster to propel yourself upwards. This is useful for quickly gaining ground and speed to either reach a specific point quickly, to jump an enemy quickly, or just to get your ult out quickly. It's really easy to do, you can either aim the Concussive by 180ing or you can just do it by aiming at the ground. Personally, I'd use the 180 if possible, aiming at the ground is not ideal since it has a high potential to miss. Next up is the Rocket Jump, this is like any other knockback jump like with Soldier or Zarya. You aim at the feet, you primary fire, and then you jump right as the primary goes out and bam, you've reached extra height. Now notice I've actually shown you Soldier's clip here, just so that you have a bit of context. Zarya is actually the same height, and Old Ferris is also the same height. Now let me show you the new Pharah. Yep, that's crazy. You actually get so much higher up, and on top of that, look at your HP you're not taking anywhere near the same amount of damage. This is the first nutty movement ability that you have. Then you can combine that with a boost to do a super jump like this. All you're doing is left clicking, jumping, and pressing shift all at the same time so that you get extra height. This will allow you to reach a significantly greater height at a really fast speed. And then on top of that, you can add a concussive blast to go slightly horizontal as well and even higher than the super jump. It's absolutely ridiculous how fast and how far you can go with these minor changes and at the frequency at which you can do it is awesome as well, since you don't have to worry so much about taking damage, nor do you have to wait an extra 3 seconds to get that concussive blast off. You can take all of this tech to do some really crazy movement patterns, as well as come up with your own variations. So now that you know these basic movement patterns, let me explain to you how to use them and what you should be accomplishing with them. At number 3, let's get into the mentality. New Pharah sucks at crowd control. You used to be able to just take on groups of enemies and completely shred them while building ults really quickly, a lot like what you could do with Junkrat. If you think about it, 15 damage reduction on an explosive property means that you're going to be losing up to 75 damage in a group of 6, which is a significant amount when you're dumping 6 shots into a group quickly. Because of this, you're not going to be playing like you used to, where you'd be high up in the air and spamming and just do well if you're uncontested. New Pharah will have none of that spammy bought out gameplay. 
No, New Farah is all about violence, speed, and momentum. There's a reason that I was able to play 30 games of pretty much only Farah, swapping out here and there only when I was getting really, really hard focused. New Farah is mobile and she's fast. If you use all these techniques quickly and really control your momentum, you're going to be incredibly hard to snipe and you're going to get kills extremely fast. So this is what you're going to do when you're on Farah. You're going to be the harasser, you're going to be the one going in and out quickly, you're going to be the one who quickly gets picks and forces the enemy to really pay attention, all while you're creating space for your team and you're going to be the one that wins fights. It's almost like Tracer's playstyle, where you're quickly going from target to target, picking off low health enemies, harassing and forcing the enemy team into your hand. When I was playing Pharah, my mentality was committing to a static target, taking their life, and then moving in and out based on the state of the fight. So it really is a lot like Tracer, but one that has to commit more heavily rather than blink in and out, and also one that has to focus targets that don't escape as quickly. Think about it, with two well-placed shots, you can confirm a kill, and if the enemy isn't protected, or if there are two squishies right there on the person that you just killed, you can get them, and then you still have your abilities to get out. You're going to move a lot like Genji does, using the geometry of your map to heavily influence your angles of attack and your dynamics as a player. You can't really stay in the same line of sight as a sniper, so you really do have to keep using the map as a cover and then pounce on the enemy whenever you're ready. If you really stay dynamic and use those abilities well to weave around the map and fight, you're going to be able to get 2-3 to three picks per fight, all while creating space for your team and ensuring that the focus isn't on them. Hunt and Pounce is the name of the game. So at number two, if you're on the new Farah, how should you be engaging and where should you be positioned? It's pretty simple. First, you want to stick somewhat near your team before the fight breaks out. If you're outside of your team's help, you're going to get sniped or focused and killed. New Farah still is weak from snipers and enemies like D.Va or somebody that will jump you. You can still get killed quickly if you're by yourself. But if you stick with your team before the fight starts and before you've passed a choke or before the enemy engages onto you, you're going to be hard to kill and you're also going to be able to deal damage alongside your team. Then once you've actually passed a choke or the enemy has actually engaged, you split and you split fast. Here's where you're going to use those engagement techniques. You're going to quickly jump onto the hitscan, get the kill, and then either get healed by your team, commit to the next kill, or dip out of the fight. You do the first two if you get the kill quickly and your team seems to be doing well, and you do the last one if your enemy starts committing ultimates to the fight or your team has dropped one too many members. Essentially, you're going to be the bulk damage while you're with your team, and then you're going to be a flanking mercenary whenever the team is actually fighting. If the team fight has broke out, the enemy really has to communicate and play well to actually fight focus you down and kill you, so if you're doing your own thing on a flank when the enemy is the busiest, you're going to live up to your name of the Rocket Queen. Make sure that you actually use the map to your advantage though, so use the flanks, use the walls, use the buildings, and use your allies to actually flank around with. When you actually want to go for the kill, use those movement techniques to quickly engage before they actually have the time to react to you. By doing so, you're never actually going to be in a rough spot, and once you actually do get the kills and put the odds in your favor, you're going to have all of your abilities back up to do the same thing over and over again. So finally, at number one, I'm just going to give you a few tips that are either related to the new Farah or just in general. First, a lot of people missed it, but Farah's ult now reloads her gun, so always launch a primary shot before you ult so that you get the extra bullet. You'll gain it back immediately and you'll reload your gun, so don't actually focus on reloading before you use your ult. You don't need to do that. So an important technique that I've actually learned myself, if you really need to get a kill, so let's say that the Ana is 1 HP, but you need to reload, you can just solo ult her and then you'll have your bullet back. There's no harm and solo ulting since you're probably going to die whenever you use your ult. So if you're going in for a kill, just make sure that it's actually valuable and don't use it on somebody that doesn't really have too much impact in the fight. Just like with most ults currently, you don't need to get multi kills to actually get good value. Solo ulting high value targets or getting double or triple kills is super, super good and will win you the fight. So if you're ever in that situation, don't ever be afraid to solo ult that Anna. Also an important thing to note is that you can use those movement abilities and instantly stop in midair with your ult. So if you ever need to get your ult off, I recommend that you move in quickly and grind to a halt with the Q press, obviously after you launch that left click. And moving away from the ult, when you're shooting your shots, don't just hold down your left click or right trigger. Time your shots and only hold down whenever you know you're going to be landing shots or just spamming in general. That's another thing to note, don't be afraid to spam doors. Your accuracy doesn't really matter, the wins do, and spamming is something that will help you immensely to know where the enemies are or even confirm or just get solo kills. Just don't spam your gun right before you're going to get jumped because then you're not going 
going to have shots and you're going to die reloading. And finally, if you're looking to practice landing your shots with your primary fire, I recommend that you do one of two things. Either first, if you don't get tilted a lot, you can go into FFA. That's personally what I did. I played a bunch of FFA before I went into playing Farah since I haven't played her in several seasons. I just played about 10 to 12 games where I just played Farah. It was very tilting though, I will admit, I did not win any of the FFA games just because people see a Farah and they want to focus her down. So if you're the type of person to get tilted at FFA, I do not recommend this. The other option is just to go into the practice range and stand in this spot and then try and make sure that you land every single direct hit. This will get you used to the speed of the rockets and also the fire rate that you have so that you can land shots better. I can promise you that this absolutely helps you a ton and you should just warm up by doing this either way. But anyway, that sums it up for these tips. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My voice is finally doing a bit better, so it doesn't sound completely awful. But if I do sound weird in some parts, just blame that. If you enjoyed this guide, let me know in the comments why you enjoyed it. And feel free to drop a like so that I know what I'm doing right and I can keep doing that. If you didn't like it or it didn't help, leave a comment explaining why and I'll read it and make sure that in the next video I fix that issue if I can do that. If you want to join the Blizzard Guides community, join our Discord where we do weekly tournaments and we just hang out a bunch. I'll be on there when this video comes out. If you want to get updates about the channel, new videos, or Overwatch news, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, or just check out our YouTube stories so that you don't miss any content. Finally, just get subscribed so that you never miss any of our uploads. We've got tips and tricks videos just like these, as well as our weekly Twitch highlight videos. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a nice day. My name is Nate, and this was Blizzard Guides. Uh -huh.